What's going on everybody? Welcome to Flying Power and today I want to talk about what is a braille display. Now, a braille display is pretty cool, right? Because you can do tactile graphics, you can do anything that your computer displays. Whether it's a uh, Duxbury file, whether it's a Word file, it doesn't matter as long as it's something that the braille display can read. You can feel it on your fingers and you can get an idea of what's on your computer screen using your hands. The cool thing with Braille Displays is that if you're on your computer and you find a Word document that you get from your professor or something and you want to read it really quickly and you're efficient at Braille reading, you can read it quicker than you can using your screen reader. So essentially Braille will never go away when it comes to uh, electronically because you can read 10 times faster than you can with your screen reader no matter even if you have your screen reader faster the comprehensive of reading is a lot better with braille versus a screen reader from what I've seen from most people um, that seems to be the case now how does a braille display work so there is different software on your computer that translates text to braille uh, one of them is Duxbury there's another one that's more widely used now, which I don't remember the name. I'll see if I'll bring up the name here on the screen if I find it. There'll be links in the description as well, by the way. And essentially these softwares, well, what they do is they'll send in the signal to the braille display, hey, uh, this means this, you know, copy this over. However, it does it um, using binary characters, so it's super, super quick, which is very nice. Now. When it sends a signal as ones and zeros, zeros means off, one means on. What essentially, there's six cells on your braille display, or there's 32 cells, whatever. But a, a full cell, braille, six cells, refer to this video that I have up there in the card to see what I mean. The previous video that I did, I talk about that. So there's braille displays of different sizes. You have a 16 cell, a 32 cell. There's 64, there's 80, like there's the, like there's some modern ones that are like 80 cell. Now what does that mean? One dot of braille is considered one cell. 80 dots can be fit on an 80 cell braille display. Now what's the use for this? Is that so just like how you have a 5.5 inch touch screen and you see that oh I can see more on it because the screen's bigger. Just like that with braille. The cells determine the size of the um, braille display essentially the size of the readable braille so um, if you have a whole full 10 uh, 10,000 essay you read it a lot quicker with a 80 braille display 80 cell braille display versus a 32 braille display because you can read 80 cells so you can read multiple lines of braille a lot quicker versus a 32 cell you only get like two or three or even four lines of braille and 80 you might get 10 or 12 lines of braille and you can read quicker and then you don't have to scroll down once you get past those 12 lines so essentially you're saving yourself the time of having to keep scrolling down having to keep scrolling down and bringing it up essentially you fit more braille on your braille display now how does those little dots pop up on the screen as i said zero means off one means on when one of those cells, that imagine that there's 80 of them, right? It says, hey, cell so-and-so and so-and-so, set them to one, which means turn them on. And those cells will raise themselves because electricity will hit the cell. If once electricity hits the cell, the electricity will remain in that cell to make the cell rise, right? And that's how they work. So those cells that rise means that electricity has hit them and that they know, hey, I have to stand up. While the other cells remain dormant, no electricity goes to them until they are needed. And the computer says, hey, you, electricity, go to cell so-and-so and, you know, wake it up. And then the electricity will go there and then, you know, you have to just get up. You know, the cell gets up, essentially. So if you're, if you're a cell, right, and say there's 80, 80 people in one room and you're all sitting down and then somebody comes from the roof and hits you with a stick in the head, you're going to stand up. You're going to be like, oh, what was that? You know, you're going to stand up. That's the same method. So if electricity, for example, um, sparks one of the cells, the cells has to rise because electricity is telling them to rise. And that's the basics of how 
the mechanical portion of the braille display works. Now more modern braille displays have a lot more cells, so it's 80 is the maximum I've seen so far, but now they have tactile graphics braille displays, which means you can display JPEGs as tactile graphics, which is pretty cool. Um, these are very, very cool because of the fact that now you can actually find actual pictures and turn them into braille. For example, emojis, some graph that's not accessible, you know, your computer just takes the pixels and the, turns the pixels into cells and then the cells get turned into the braille display, which I find that so genius because sometimes the professor will send you something that is not accessible, but it doesn't matter because the computer will just turn those pixels into cells and then send them to your braille display, which is awesome, right? I guess cells to pixels, it's, the same, it's, it's essentially the same meaning except one word contains a lot more pixels than in braille a cell. For example, you know, the letter D has three cells, you know, one, three, four. So that's, a, that's the basics of the display portion. Now on the bottom of the braille display you have the cells, so you have each button, so you have six buttons for the cell, so one button means each cell. Believe it or not, uh, in, braille, in the braille displays, this, the keys are actually mechanical. Not as mechanical as an actual brailler, but they are mechanical. They have way less travel, so that like when you push them, you don't, they don't go down as further. That's called travel. Um, the travel is very short. If you're coming from a brailler to a braille display, you might have to get used to, to that lesser travel, because the travel on a, braille, on a brailler is a lot more than on a braille display. Now, the cool thing though is that you can type a lot quicker on a braille display because you don't have to push down the keys, you can just barely touch them and you're typing, right? And it seems pretty cool. Now, braille displays essentially get treated as something that your computer looks up at it as a, a, uh, a priority device, something that if you have a software to translate it, it'll work. If you don't have anything to translate the software, then it won't work. Softwares that translate uh, for the braille display are JAWS, Window Eyes, NVDA, and so forth. There's more. There's Duxbury, but Duxbury's so old. Um, there's a new one too, which I can't remember. It's except, I don't remember the name of the new one. However, NVDA is free and open source, and if you have a braille display, you can just install NVDA, turn a speech off, and voila, you got yourself a nice braille display translator. It uses the same translation engine as JAWS, essentially. So, if you just need the translation engine, you don't have to buy JAWS, you can just go and get it. However, JAWS is a lot higher quality because JAWS will support Nimeth, JAWS will support tactile graphics displays, more fancy stuff. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, should I go and get a $10 computer, you know, off a hardware store and then go versus going and buying a $800 computer that does everything 10 times better. It's kind of what you got, you know. But NVDA is good, it's an open source project and honestly it's, it's pretty cool because you have, you know, if you, if, you need, you, if you just go on any computer you can install it and your braille display works, which is pretty cool and you can sometimes even have a thumb drive that you just plug in with your braille display. Uh, onto a computer and you have yourself your display working. So that's the neat, that's the neat portion of the whole braille display thing is that um, they, they have free open source software that you can actually run to make your braille display usable say at school, uh, if, your if your school computers get erased every time they restart or whatever, you can do that. So braille displays are very very diverse, you can use them in any scenario just about with any software that translates it and that's how it works. This is basically on and off switches that make the braille display things go up the little cells, right? So, you know, it makes sense. Now, there's some so many new types of braille displays and there's tactile graphics braille displays which are essentially the same thing except the dots are a lot smaller so that they can essentially make you think that you're feeling a smooth surface but you're really not. They're just a lot closer together and a lot smaller so they're essentially just like the size of pixels. That's why essentially the tactile braille displays would push out the pixels to cells. Very, very tiny micro cells. So 
that's been my little explanation of Braille displays. Uh, if you know, if you are familiar with Braille displays, let me know. I guess if everything I said here was on point, or if you have anything you want to add, the, the comments are out there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just as I enjoyed making it, comment, rate, subscribe, you know what I do. I will see you in the next video.